<laughs> the island designers, uh, bouquets and wearables by our island designers. And today with us, live and in person, we have Miss Lois Hiranaga. Hi, Johnny. How are you? I'm fine, Lois. How are you? Great. <laughs> we keep having fun together, right? And here's Sue again. <laughs> Yay! <Hello. laughs> and also on this, this um, virtual, um, on the Zoom, is Dottie Reynolds Yadel mm -hmm. from Kauai and um, Leah Mercado right over there. Hi, Leah. Hi, everybody. Okay. Um, he told me, would you like to sh share um, how this all came about with the bouquets and wearables? Yeah, so uh, this was this is a beautiful recording, an excerpt from the uh, first session uh, of the group together. Uh, four of them, and we call them island designers, not because we throw them all in together, but they are the premier Hefna island designers selected uh, specifically to represent their islands. And, and you've been lucky to see some of the, the beautiful videos that's created for the islands uh, featuring them, as well as we wanted to share with you what they did in, in front of our audience at the live event in Hilo. So the topic was bouquets and wearables and these designers each it was a panel of four designers all designing at, on the stage together and it was just a wonderful display of beautiful beautiful workmanship craftsmanship creativity ideas i mean it was just wonderful so we want to share with you the works of lois who i like to introduce as the the connoisseur florist it's a uh, it, it, she's a florist that that I think a bride is lucky to have because she will curate your bouquet until it's perfection. And she is also the co-author of Neotropica Guide. And so she's a very knowledgeable brain behind all the ID of all the different flowers that are in the guide. Of course, Sue, we met already, and she is a, a designer extraordinaire when it comes to weddings and, and the event work. And, and she is just... Uh, she travels to where the jobs, where the talent is required because she is much in demand and she does some wonderful weddings that we've seen certainly on her Instagram account. Uh, and then, of course, Dottie that works quietly in, in, in Kauai and do some really cool things. And we can all identify with what she does uh, as a florist working, um, uh, you know, with a lot of the beautiful flowers in Kauai. I especially identify with her because... In my uh, flower shop of many years, 27 years, I was not a big um, wedding designer that I took on big, big events. I probably took two or three big ones, but most of the time, manageable ones. And so I kind of identify a lot with, with uh, the way she works, the hard work, uh, sort of solo woman, one woman, one woman show. And then Leah and Kelsey, great team of sisters. Oh my God, the efficiency between those two, the whip up stuff and and I know they, they do a lot of beautiful weddings over on the, the Kona side of the island and, of course, all over the island because there are also a couple of girls that's in high demand. And, and I'm just curious as to know, uh, because I, I really want to get to know Leah and Kelsey a little bit more. I wonder if you can tell us, uh, Leah, what is the biggest, the biggest job that you've ever done, the two of you, on, on the big island? Um, we did a corporate event at one of the hotels, and it was, I think, 96 tables, oh 96 gosh. rounds. It oh was centerpieces, gosh. and they also had lays for the guests. That was the wow. largest. That's a lot of work, you guys. But that, there's two of you just cranking it out, right? So uh, that, yeah, there's the two sides. Things. There's Dottie that's doing a lot of things independently, and then there's the two of you like a machine. And then there's the extraordinary, the connoisseur, and, and amazing. So this is what we have on this wonderful team. And so we get to watch what they created uh, for us alive at that show in Hilo. So is that a good enough introduction, guys? Does that tell everything about you guys? So let's just roll the, the film so that we can see how good you really are. Here we go. <laughs> Amaze us all. I think this is the mo one of the most exciting sec segment of our uh, presentations and the wedding celebration, right? Because we get to really showcase the, the talents of our island designers. Yes, our sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? They're such 
they have such expertise in the material knowledge and how to use them and how to flatter them. And I think you'll be thrilled to, that they're sharing all their knowledge and all their expertise, right? And of course, we have Tessie as well to refer to for nomenclature and things, because I think that's what's really wonderful about a program like this is to, to get to know the material really, really well, right? We'll try our best. Yes, absolutely. So what we want to do is bring up one by one. Uh, <clears throat> we have you know, four designers here representing four different islands. So you, we have the Kauai, we have uh, Oahu, Maui, and the Big Island. So uh, let's just call them up one by one. One by so one. So let's start with... Dari Maya Dao, Kauai. Dari, come on up, come on up. <laughs> Oh, we'll start with Dottie. Yeah, you need to come up center stage so we can introduce you guys. Yes. So, your business? Garden Island Party Essentials. Yeah, so she's really event designer. You do a lot of weddings, right? On, on the island? Yep. Yeah. Lots yeah. of uh, runaway brides and grooms. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. Fabulous. Okay. Yes. Next we have Lois Miss Maui. <laughs> Representing Maui. Maui no Kauai. <clears throat> Maui no Kauai, yes. Happy to be here. Yeah, and Lois Hiranaga, AIFD. And as, as uh, Eric mentioned, she represented Hawaii at the AIFD National Symposium. Did a fabulous job. Impressed everybody with her beautiful work, <laughs> Sue's beautiful work in Brenas. But more than anything, the beautiful product of Hawaii. <laughs> Did such a great job. Thank you. Okay. I'll take it. <clears throat> and take you my are. So I'm Lois Hiranaga from Maui, as she said, and I have my own studio florist, Lois Hiranaga Floral Design, pretty much specializing in destination weddings. Yeah. And amazing, beautiful bouquets, which you'll see. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so, I think I know. I recognize some of these from the design room. Yes. And our representing Oahu is Sue Tabal Yamaguchi, who just came back from Europe less than a week ago. Yeah. She's a world traveler. And of course, she's a wonderful wedding and event designer out of Oahu. So tell us a little bit about you. Uh, well, my name is Sue Tabal Yamaguchi, AIFD. EMC. E EMC. <laughs> yes, I just literally got back from Europe on Tuesday. And uh, wow. my shop is uh, Suvi Expressions on Oahu. And we specialize mostly in weddings. We do other events as well, but mostly in weddings. And uh, she's um, in, like at AIFD and that recruited a whole troop of people that roll leaves for her, all these beautiful detail work. So you're going to see some really cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I made them roll a lot of lily grass it's rolls. Kathleen. That was one of the bouquets that we presented at Symposium. And uh, Tess, Dr. Tessie and Kathleen. Kathleen and John and Mark, I got everybody involved to roll and roll and roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about teamwork, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. You do it by yourself. You do a great job. OK. And then? Uh, last but not least, we have our representatives from Hawaii Island. So we have Leah and, and Kelsey, Kelsey Mercado. So tell us a little bit about your business, where you are. Um, you are we're Ainuho Florals. We're from Kamuela. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do some little bit farming. We do full service flower shop, deliveries, hotel work, weddings, and yeah. Yeah, no, we're excited to have them. Yeah, let's get right. started. Thank it's going to be exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I created this one based off this cymbidium that we got. It's like a bronze color. Yeah. And then from there, I just matched the different flowers. That, everything is locally grown here. So we have the Lysianthus, some Pennycress, um, the Honeycomb Ginger, Lanaka, some Rattlesnake. And I think these are May Days of the Protea. And then I just finished it with some Cascading Green Amaranthus and some Whaleback. Excellent. 
Very nice. Can we yes. carry it and maybe walk it around so they can yes, see? Yes, I'll it walk it around, around so everybody yeah. can see. I love the mixture. Thank you. Do a lot of the destination brides, the people that come from the mainland and other places, re like really love the, the tropical combination? Yes, yes. They like the tropicals because they're in Hawaii, but they still want to have a little bit of what they have from homes with the Lysianthus or the amaranthus that they're familiar with yes. to incorporate with the tropicals. So are they getting away from asking for just hydrangeas and roses? I hope yes, so. yes. Thank yes. goodness, finally, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was kind of getting ridiculous there for a while that you were doing all this imported stuff mm -hmm. here in Hawaii, right? I'm yes. so glad that has changed. <laughs> Thank you. And Kelsey, like you work with her, like you guys are partners working together all the time or? Um, well, Leah, for the most part, does the floral arranging and bridal bouquets and I do more of like the lace, ah. the corsages, the hakus, all of that. Yeah? So, did you, did um, you want to go ahead and show yeah, that? Yeah, sure. So this one here, um, is the strawberry akuli Oh my god, look at this. We grow this on our farm. Um, it takes about 450 flowers to make one leg. We pick the flowers, um, it's an ice plant, uh, which is the English name. Uh, we pick the flowers either in the early morning or right before the sun sets so that they're in the bud form. So we sow it in the bud form and then as you wear it, your body heat will um, make the flowers bloom and open up. Wow. And then I just kind of garnished it here with some peacock oh, bows and a Kimi medallion in the middle, just to give it a little fragrance. Gosh, it's gorgeous. Can I just show it around? Yeah. Oh my gosh. But before I go, let's get Sue started on her conversation with her bouquet. So what do you have there? Um, well, I, because I just got back from Europe, Europe, I wanted to do something European inspired. But I wanted to use tropical flowers and showcase. So basically, I made an armature. I did a spider web on the bottom where you weave the bind wire. So I used bind wire for that because I wanted to stick with the same color story. And then I used um, flat cane. I don't know if we can still get in the US, but I brought it back from Europe. I, never I went shopping. I would have never shopped. And then I used um, this, I it's plant. the small wood I rose vine. Used. And I found out that it's not invasive, but the big one, the big wood rose is. And this is what it looks like with the leaves on. So I just kind of took all the leaves off. And it has like some medicinal things like, um, what was it made? It, it, it's like hallucinogenic or something like. <laughs> Interesting, yeah, so I was like, if I touch it, will I hallucinate? Because I was thinking, I just got off the plane, so maybe, I don't know. But yeah, that's what I used. And then I, there's like some tucked in, some of the light pink torch gingers. The orchids, what I did was if the stems were long, we cut it in half and we wired it. Um, and then we put it into the bouquet so it actually fills up more. You can get a lot out of a stem of orchids if you cut it in half and you wire the other half and then you use the one with the stem to stick in and the other one. Um, and then I used uh, two varieties of anthuriums, which I can't remember the name of them. Maybe Dr. Tessie could tell us. Which one? Princess Eichel. And uh, the other Cassie one, or? I'm not quite Cassie. sure. Cassie. Yeah. Cassie. Okay. No, no, it's Wait. not 2265 yet. <laughs> Anyways, I used uh, two different types. And then I used the um, Moi Moi, which is my absolute favorite. So I wanted this to be the focal point and highlight this into the bouquet and just soften it up with all the other colors that you, you have the, the colors just going into the, the, the spadix has the pink, you have the pink here, the whites and the, the colors from the vines. But that's it. I walk it around. We have Lois Hernaga here with her bouquet. And I gotta, I've gotta—I just got to say this about Lois, because I've been working with her for many years. Her sense of color and her sense of just the, the right combination that really intrigues the eye. And we talked yesterday about competing in that. You can also just grab judges that way with such a combination that just like knocks you, knocks you dead. 
and she's just good at that. So just wanted to say that because she wows me every time. Go ahead. Thank you, Hitomi. Yeah, so my, I really have, of all the things for weddings, I love to do bouquets. And going out and actually harvesting flowers or meeting growers and just really, I mean, even if you're at the farmer's market, to find the right color and the texture is like, I, I say I scour the earth, so it might not be the most economical way to do a wedding, but most of the weddings, the destination weddings aren't big. So you don't have a big party to do, or sometimes it's a very small party. So, and maybe they don't have the big ceremony flowers. So to me, the bouquet becomes the crowning jewel for them. So I spend a lot of time on a bouquet and color. And to get, to develop a relationship with a grower or grow some of your own is to me the way you're gonna find the perfect, the perfect combination, the total combination. And I do bouquets from the front end and the back end versus one-sided. Um, often I find when we're delivering a bouquet, I'm, it, I may never even see the couple or the photographer. So leaving it to chance to, that they're gonna hold it from the right side. I mean, I've left a wedding and they have the whole bridal party and they're holding it the wrong way and we have to stop the car and actually get out and say, stop, wait, wait, wait. You've got the wrong side and we have to flip it. So the approach really is to finish both sides. So in this case, it's a pink and peach palette. And I'm starting with this because I think it's like the happy palette. And through the program, you'll see me design different colors. So you can see the variety of what Hawaii has to offer and the combinations you could possibly choose. So we have here a pink torch ginger. So this is an El El Etlingera. And then we have Kimi gingers, which are Alpinias tuberose, so you have the pretty white to blush, which transitions beautifully with the mini king. And in this king here, there's so many different sizes. So when you order flowers, you want to be very aware of the size that you're actually ordering, so you're in proportion to your overall design. So this is actually a baby king, and there is one that's even smaller. The um, white here really creates this bullseye effect on the arrangement. So I'm pulling through other white flowers so that your eye kind of spreads out and it's not, you're not looking at a target. But basically that king, for me, I would put the king in the back. So in photography, it's not, your eye's not gonna just land on the king. And we're adding this um, celosia, which really is bridging the color between the peach and there's some pink in it. And all the colors in this celosia here are actually in this bouquet. And through the, through the presentation, you'll see that I'm using different kinds of gingers specifically for the color. There's in here a Darwin and then there's a Kimi. And the Kimis have a variation as well. There may be eight or nine different types of Kimis. So when I develop these relationships with growers, I'm able to actually tell them what I'm looking for. And that's really, for me, critical to get the right, perfect combination, which, and a lot of editing. You know, sometimes we see everything and we're like wanting to put everything in the bouquet because they're all so pretty, but it's sometimes the restraint to hold back so you have a really well created, curated bouquet. And the jasmine is just for movement in tr transparency of the pepperberry. I love when the bride walks down the aisle and there's some movement as she's going down as they video. Um, this is something new that I'm trying here. It's the Chinaman's hat. And that is just kind of bridging more of the earth tones, which you actually see through this. I would say this is a designer size anthurium. And that's really key to Hawaii offers different sizes, and Bruno mentioned that. So to know that this is like a designer size and it's probably the most appropriate size for um, bridal bouquets. And then later you'll see uh, when we bring out the obakes, like in Sue's bouquet, with the obakes, they are very large. 
So even if you say small, an obake will take you to a different, a different group. So those are kind of like the key things. Um, I would say if I can impart when you design or order that you get what you want. So this is my pink and peach bouquet. Thank you. So next we're going to go to Dottie. Oh, God. Dottie, so what, what are we doing here? You're making a bouquet with, uh, isn't it interesting that that when we started, to, when the designer started to use a protea, and it was the one protea because it's pretty big, and pretty soon there's two proteas. Like, who would have ever thought, like 10 years ago or more, that we would be working with such big material, but how stunning it is because of it. It's so bold and it's so dramatic. So tell us a little bit about your bouquet. Well, <laughs> um, I, I always try to bring a tropical base to the flowers, but tropicals are hard, and the mainland brides are used to seeing soft, flowy, fluffy, whatever. So I tell them, no, you know, I can introduce other flowers that can soften it up, but like the reality, this color range, I took the lavender accents from the points on this bromeliad that I don't know the name of, because it's just beautiful creamy ivory, but it has purple flow to the ends of the tips. So I brought that color out by adding in the softer flowers. It's really sharp. It's one of those. So I'm building out the foliage on it using like the curly lowai. So it'll kind of keep it out of the bride's face should she get up to it. <clears throat> Little protection. Um, and then, you know, it's just going out and looking for beautiful tea leaf colors like this and then that'll be the final collar and hopefully draw all the colors together. Well I think her selection of that sort of painterly beautiful it almost looks hand brushed and you can see in her selection like they're all different right? Yep, it's every... like nature's painting mm -hmm. and uh, to, for her to select that to, to go with different parts of her design like that, that really matches beautifully to a lot of the, the coloring that's in some of these inflorescence. I think it's, it's, a, it's a great finish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this, great job, Dottie. This tea plant is really intelligent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it starts out like these are the younger toward the center of the plant. So you gotta make sure whenever you're picking tea leaves, um, ferns from the wild and whatever, you, you feel the leaf. And if it feels sticky, there's a little pull on the leaf. Don't use it. It's going to die. Oh. So this is at the perfect. It still has that nice color variation because it'll mature into maybe something like this, you know, so it gets darker as it gets older in the plant. Oh, so that leaf actually changes and evolves. It grows, yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> And, and out of that bouquet, they can keep those leaves, right? Because they last a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This bouquet, I mean, of course, you'd have to take the temperates out. But I found a seed pot or two. <laughs> so you could leave that in the bouquet and keep this. I mean, it, it really goes to show you that inclusion of temperate really softens it. Yeah. Because the spikiness of it all is what a lot of mainland designers, they didn't know what to do with it. It just seemed, seemed too sharp, and especially to sell to a bride, but when you soften it with that temperance, it just makes all the world of difference. We're really happy that we did come up with the coin term Tropical Nouveau because it sounds really good. Tropical and then Nouveau is like new, and the new is to include the temperance and marry it to get that beautiful color palette and textures going. Good job there, Dottie. Thank you. Let's get back to Via. So tell us a little right. bit about it. So we wanted to incorporate some kind of lay element or I guess the more nouveau part of it. So we decided to wire some baby roses and then make, um, just wire it around this. Okay. <laughs> and then we found this upstairs. It just adds a little bit of fun texture and we have some cascading shell ginger, Baltic beauty, Zimbidium, the king, and then hokulo and mini tuberose. 
So maybe Dr. Tessie could tell us a little bit about the shell ginger. <laughs> you put me on a spot. <laughs> it's one of our gorgeous tropicals. Um, what was that? Shell ginger. Yeah, yeah. shell ginger. Shell. Huh? Longevity. I guess that's the one that I think a lot of people hesitate because it's not long lasting. Not, not too long lasting, no. But if you're in Hawaii, it's beautiful. That's, the, that's what we want to kind of pitch. Like if you love Hawaiian or Tropical Nouveau or a Neotropical Bouquet, you have to marry in Hawaii, right? Yeah. We want to attract to, uh, brides, these destination brides to come here to experience something better than having it shipped because you can't ship it, but if you want it, you come here. That's, that's what we think. So longevity on it, not too long. Not too long. Yeah, but beautiful, right? Look at this. Look at the blooms on it. There's like the, the blooms that open up, so beautiful. Yeah. I just wanted to add something about shell ginger. I've discovered um, right before they open and they're still in the sheet, if you pick it then, and then like the next day, or even that hour or two, it'll open up. Oh. And so I think I can extend it another day by doing that. That's a great tip. So if any, any of you down there, did, did you hear? So she was saying that she picks it while it's still in its sheath, and then just, uh, you know, just let it open up after it's revealed. It, you just like shake it even, it'll okay. pop open if it's ready. So you're not actually exposing the mature blooms too long, just you reveal it kind of just before? Is that a good idea, Allison? Yeah, that'll definitely work. I don't know if the yellow flowers will open, but the, they'll stay on a little longer and they stay more pristine that way. If you can find them or if you can pick up that, that stage, it's a nice idea. So what is this? Just tell us. What is this? It's, I'm not sure it's which. A palm, it's right? a palm fruit. Yeah. These are the young palm fruit. In practices, fruit. would that be? That's the terminology for beyond Inflorescence is a flower, so, and then when it forms the those fruit. little fruit, then it becomes infructescent. Just a little terminology to impress your customers, right? So yeah, so the yellow one are the real flowers for the shell ginger. Yeah, okay. yeah, just do. So um, when we went up to Waimea to do some touring, I was told that the Watanabe used to have a farm up there that mm -hmm. grew a lot of those spray roses yep. for the lay work. So the, the spray rose lays are really popular here. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? So that's, that's why it's kind of really nice sort of sentimental inclusion yes. into your bouquet. Yeah, those are all locally grown. Everything from that bouquet. Excellent. Perfect. OK, so Sue, what do we have? Um, well, I did another armature. It's, I, I call it like the spider web. Um, I did the spider web also. Mm -hmm. You have the wires, and yeah. I actually um, oh, use like the Phoenix. black wires I brought back from Europe because <laughs> we don't have them here. <laughs> I went shopping. <laughs> and then I still I use the bind wire on the bottom. And then I cut up, I believe this is birch? No, I think it's oh, willow. Willow? Yeah. OK. Yeah, it's a willow web. Is this from Europe? Did you bring it? No. Yeah. I had this. I think this is from Ikea. Oh, it's the willow web. Yeah, the willow web. Yeah, the willow web. Ikea, yeah. and uh, it's called Torka. Yeah, so um, I cut it up in parts, and then I just kind of overlap them to make the same, um, to, to carry out the story of the web. So it, it's just carrying it out to mimic that, just to make it a little bigger. And then um, I'm going to add, so I bought <laughs> more feathers from Europe. This is a really gorgeous color. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I got um, skeleton leaves here. And so it was individually wired. I did this at home um, once I got off the plane. And um, I'm going to add like some tea leaves. They have some really pretty tea leaves. So we took off the brackets and wired them individually. And cymbidium. So I'm just going to put it together and see what happens. I'm going to get behind her so I can really have a peek at what she's got going on here. Because you, I see something, ingredients coming up that I oh, just yeah. want to, oh, look at this. Whoa, look at so that. So of course I have to add the lay element. I like to add lays into my bouquets. If you were to look at some of the work, if they wanted lays, I'll add the lay elements in there. And especially like in the ceremony, I use a lot of lays. 
I mean, look at her selection right here at the table. I had to come up because look at this, 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 right? Look at how gorgeous those colors are. And of course, with the, the deepening colors of the browns, like that's what we were talking about yesterday. Pick up the material just one by one to fit into the color palette. Have just one of each so that you can see how they interact with each other because this is uh, uh, before even she designs, it's just absolutely gorgeous selection. Really important. You do such a good job with that. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, and I w also wanted to mention the Oncidium because they are so long. You can actually, the same again, you can cut them in half um, and you can wire them and use them because, you know, sometimes they're just too big. But I actually just wired the stems so that way I have more to fill out into my bouquet. Um, so what's the longevity of those then when they're not in a water source? The oncidiums? Well, if, because I do wedding work, it, I usually will do it like maybe a day or two before and I put it in the refrigerator and it's fine. Two days before? Yeah. yeah. I put it in the refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. So the key... What the, temperature on, the, on your oncidiums? Uh, my refrigerator fluctuates between 40 and 55. But if I have a lot of flowers and it's more 55, so, um, yeah, I, I actually store like my dendrobiums in there, my oncidiums in there, my cymbidiums, and they last pretty long. Do you cover them with anything or are you just? No, but um, I, well, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I get good luck with my flowers. Uh, I guess it's because of where I order them from. I mean, I order them locally and they're, they're fantastic. Like even uh, Philanopsis, I would wire them individually and I would still have them. But if it's Philanopsis, I would do maybe a day ahead. The key really with hydration, it's really like Sue always talks about, and I do too, the hydration chamber. So it's a cooler, but it's yeah. really a good idea, especially for mainland people. It yeah. doesn't have the humidity extra that to buffer a, a lot of that issues. Yeah, and my refrigerator has a lot of moisture in it. So if but, I, but it is yeah. probably a good idea, actually, to take a piece of like really light plastic like they use for dry cleaning and actually mist it and use that as a tent over and wrap. And that just, like, I promise you, it can, it can stay looking good for two, three, four days. You yeah. can do it easily many days in advance. Yeah, gorgeous. Sue, so how long did it take you to make the collar? Two days. <laughs> I wanted this to be special. Yeah. yeah. So I worked hard. OK, yeah. so there's exactly what I said yesterday as well. Like the craftsmanship of something beautiful to really frame your bouquet. If you have a competition where there's no time that you can time restriction, go for it, because that just really adds that extra craftsmanship that really, really sings. So. I'm glad that you took the time to do it for us yeah. because that, that really exemplifies some of that, that competition work or some special bride who could really appreciate something really beautiful. And you have something to keep afterwards that you can then put in the vase and put some flowers into it. So right. That's the beauty of the structure, isn't it? Right, yes. Yeah. So if you were to make something like this because anthuriums don't like the fridge. Or we so I would make my structure first. Because once you make your structure, it's easy just to insert flowers. I mean, if you're watching, I mean, I'd probably be done in another 10 minutes versus something if you were to make it, it's going to take you however long. Depending on what your structure is, it'll, it'll take longer. But you can, one thing, the beauty about this is you can make it in advance using whatever material you want. And then you would make it like a day before and put your, like, in the flowers, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I actually do put some anthuriums in the refrigerator. I do. Yeah, I actually, it's learning by my mistakes. So if I was to make a centerpiece earlier, then the anthuriums would turn brown. But I actually would put, I would leave the anthuriums in the fridge two days max, gingers two days max. Orchids, I, I, once I get it, I put it in because I want the longevity of them. So I, I really take care because it's, it's really hard to get the flowers, you know, like orchids if it's not in season. But anthuriums, I usually leave it out. But if I make it into something, then I'll leave it in there a day or two at the most. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. One more thing I want to talk about is the oncidium. Uh, that's Greenpoint Nurseries item. 
they have the best consortium in the world. I'll say that because we have shipped from all over. Usually, really just buds on the tips, and then the rest of it drops off because of shipping and it's dry. Theirs is it blooms out to the tip. I mean, it's just spectacular. Like we went up to Curtistown to their farm where the oncidiums are. That and it's like blooming full out right now. It's it's like heavenly, absolutely gorgeous. So if you ever get a chance to see it, you should. But it's it's the best in the world. I'll say that because I have not seen anything better. Okay, so Lois, what do you have? Okay, in this one we we're doing a lavender palette. And we have, being from Maui, I'm trying to really feature as much protea because that's pretty much, I would say, what we're most known for in the breeding from the college. Um, I'm actually, so we have the king, which you would recognize, but I'm using some of the foliages, which are, are picking up the color. This is a galpinii, and you normally would see it when you have like see the pods, silver pods on it. But I, it, with this palette in mind, I was like, no, I want the foliage. And there is a male and female galpinii. So when you're ordering it, I'm not sure. I don't know if Russell or one of the agents know which one this is, whether it's the male or the female. But if you said you wanted it with the lavender spiral, that would indicate which one it is. So Lois, can I just interrupt for a moment? Yes. So then when you order, you ask for a male or female? <laughs> Well, not, I bet you not many growers would be able to tell you that, you know. So I would say it's a galpinii, but I would only want it if it had a spiral in it because it is the stage. So you'd have to be very clear that you're looking for it at that particular stage, or you may get it. If you're ordering a galpinii, they'll probably think you want the silver pod. And I'm not looking at, for it for the silver pod. And it would be the same case where you have this um, Brunia albiflora. I'm actually looking for that because I want the white in it. And I don't want it to look like a Brasilia or a Brunia where you're only going to have your green babbles. I I'm actually trying to pick up this coloration. So my, I'm very detailed in, and very specific. Not too many growers like that. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I mean, literally, it, it, it's, you know, I think because we did the guide many years ago and I've been in the industry as a grower for 16 years prior to being a florist. So it's having built that relationship over the years that I know some of these people before I started floristry because floristry was not my first profession in the field. But they, you know, they know who you are, so they, they trust you and a lot of times they'll let me just pick what I want and run through the farm. Yeah. You know what, I have to say, lucky brides that gets her bouquet because so much detail is put into it and when she gazes into it, there's just like a world of treasures that she has curated for her. It's amazing because they're real, like a beautiful botanical selection, perfectly put together by an artist. That's what I see with some of her beautiful work. So in this case, we are featuring the white torch. Earlier I showed you the pink torch, which shouldn't be confused with a red torch or a, there's so, even a red torch, the most common one, if you get that in a bud stage, it won't, it'll actually be a pretty peachy coral. So if that's the color you're looking for, you could get a red torch, but you want it in a younger stage. So you get, you can, you really can tailor your colors. So here's our white. Um, you know, we were talking about the shell ginger. So let me go back to the shell ginger. So the best way to hold the shell ginger is you get it in the sheath. And you don't release, you put a rubber band around it. And you don't release that rubber band until you just go to delivery. It's not only protecting the shell ginger that she had, but it would keep it in the right stage. Or even if you had a protea, um, I'll show a protea eczemia later. If you keep it, my latest thing is to cut a nylon stocking and I'll actually tie it up so that it doesn't blow open and you don't get this part. 
So it'll open up closer to the date you want to use it. That'll kind of help hold it so you don't get this blowout. I mean, some people might like that, but you can do those extra precautionary things. If you know your wedding's, you know, like a couple days down the road, you can hold back like the shell ginger. And it actually would protect it in the refrigerator. I normally won't put um, anthuriums or gingers in for more than three days in a refrigerator because you start to see things getting a little bit more translucent or edge burn. Um, How many days for the protea do you? Protea can go in the refrigerator much longer. I've had protea in the refrigerator for two weeks and no problem. So in the case when we went to symposium, I had the kafras in a night, uh, like a nylon stocking, just cut it up and I tied the top to keep it closed. And we were there like over a week in advance and it was just perfect. And the eczemias, you could do that as well. So you could do it with your minks, kings, so that you don't get the blowout. Um, so in this case, we have the galpenia, which, which is what I'm featuring. The brunia is also a protea. Um, the combination, the dahlias are really, the temperates are what's softening the whole design and the snapdragons are giving that extra movement as well as with the pink trailing jasmine. And we have in this one here, some local eucalyptus, which is part of the import replacement program. And I did see yesterday, I hope you folks can take the survey that they were talking about for the, so the ag station, you know, they know which direction to go to help the local grower, I mean, the florist for us to get it, because we can't, we can't import that anymore to protect our ecosystem. Yeah. So I think, I mean, and what I was doing, this is like my earth tone, moi moi anthurium. It's the same anthurium that Sue used, but you can see the different variation in what happens in an obake. There's no two that are gonna look exactly alike. So, and the coloration itself could be very different. Way more green to clean pink to dirty brown in it. But I think that's on trend to show this more dirty side of it. Um, if there, you have any questions on? Have you had any issues with the king protea and the pollen ever? I have had an issue on pollen, big time issue, not on the King Protea, on a Gloriosa. Hitomi's favorite, white dress. We were handling it all day, never got it on me. But also the pin cushion will do the same thing. So the, yeah, the pin cushion, the, each style, each style has right here, you're gonna have pollen. And all of that is, could be a potential problem on a white dress. I have yes. had the King Protea, I, it uh, was an event arrangement, but I was delivering it and I've never, in all the work that we do with it, had it happen, but when I was set it down, it left a big ring on me. So yeah, that, is, that could potentially yeah. be something. Yeah. So chenille is your first course of trying to remove that. The first, the first thing a coordinator will do is take the wet rag, done. It's done, it's not gonna, it's not gonna come up. That's the worst thing. So that's, I mean, and then they have no clue about the chenille until it happens, and then it becomes part of their arsenal in their tool bag, tool bag to have it. So that, yeah, that happened recently. Beautiful, Gloriosa, just mm. right down her bust. Want us to take that around? Oh, so oh. what I did here, the last thing is the fairy dust. You might have seen me going, cauterizing the tip of the amaranth because it was too short. And the bouquets we started earlier, I could probably put a water tube and, and do it. But for this, I think it's fine. Globe amaranth will hold up. So I just put a little dab of glue and you could actually, you can't see where it stuck it in. I've got so much foliage. So um, the cauterizing is to help to retain the moisture. But in this case, because they were so short, the glue will actually help just keep it in place. 
Yeah, I so, think that's a perfect solution. Yeah. Okay. Again, finished on both ends. Yeah. Can we walk it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we forgot to do that with the other one. Okay. We'll, we'll do that too. Okay, maybe. Okay. So uh, actually, Lois is the one that also taught me not to take the plastic cover over the anthurium when, like, with green point, they, especially with the whites. And I worked with her, and I'm taking those off to put in the vase, and she's like, no. She keeps it on till we deliver it. And we take it off when we get there so that there's no bruising. That well, makes total yeah, sense. Even with the table centerpieces, on the varieties, the lighter pastel color anthuriums, I'll actually keep that plastic protection on it so when we're in the van, it doesn't brush up because it may just be brushing up against another foliage. So that's just extra, extra protection. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So she's got lots of great advice about everything. Yeah, she's, she's done it all. Okay, so we have Dottie with her next bouquet. Uh, this is a cascading bouquet that you created. Some really cool material in here. Let's talk about it. Okay, I didn't realize when I started doing this that this was going to be the year of the banyan root. <laughs> but from a previous wedding, I had a bunch left over, and so I said, I, I gotta do something with it. It's just gathering dust. So I got some bunches together, started at one end and, you know, the thinner end, and just used um, tape wrapped wire. So it gives me a little bit of flexibility, not a lot, but I did this. So I started in the tail of my cascade. It has, I did loops of it going in both directions. And then the top, the armature for holding the bouquet is a long rope and I made a double swing of the same thing. Then um, added wires to it to make my handle. Um, so I got rid of a big bunch of my leftovers. <laughs> um, I obviously like lots of color in this one. Um, just trying to marry this tone to that tone to that tone. Pokey hard texture, soft flowers on top. Trying to incorporate this so it's not invisible and making it part of the curve. Um, my first intention was a few more of the Philanopsis coming down, but enough is too much. Um, and I had at home one extra Miley style tea leaf lay, <laughs> and it was drying nicely on the wall. So I said, well, I don't know. I, I wanted to try doing an organic wrap for this. So it's, this will last nicely. It has a nice olive green tone. And then it, you know, it's just the idea of using something that's constructed like this, something that's braided like this, um, made sense to me. <laughs> and of course, I love the pepperberry. I've, it just adds so much motion to the bouquet. So that's about it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Is that pretty common for you guys to incorporate vermilion? That's the case. Well, it hasn't been over the years. Um, <laughs> I was always known as the reasonable florist. That's why people used to come to me. Um, but when you start, well, David Shige has been developing all these colors and all these shapes and so it, it, it's a good blend point, you know, because they have all those colors. But I go to Home Depot and I buy one bromeliad plant and it's 20 bucks. So, oh, your bouquet's going to be a little, <laughs> a little bit more expensive now. So it, it kind of depends on the price point. It's um, beautiful. Could you guys address the price point, all of you? Because you're making such amazing, like, 
two days on your beautiful armature. And, you know, these are specialty bouquets and, and you're making, and Lois is like harvesting and going to the world, going throughout the world to find all of her flowers. And, you know, there's so much love and heart. It's not just the product that we're talking about as far as coming up with a price point for that. Um, I'm guessing that your brides that are coming over here to uh, destination weddings, you know, their bouquet is probably the feature of their wedding. Um, but ha because so it's very different than over on the mainland, you know, we're, 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 it's, I'm guessing that you're able to put a lot of the funds from the bride into the bouquet itself. How, how does that generally work over here? Because it's at home in state or in the mainland, it's very different. So for a show, the bouquets are much bigger. I would say it's more to this size, but it's, um, it's really cumbersome to kind of have your pen and paper. I've just kind of found that the starting point really is at 300. And if it's gonna involve a lot more detail or if it's a cascade, I'm at 350. And if it's got 13 varieties in it, it's probably about $450. Because especially if we had to calculate, we were bringing in the flowers, that a lot of temperates, and it was 13, you know, especially when this organic look came out, it just jacked the price up big time because you needed so many bunches. And if they were coming in for an elopement, and a lot of my, my weddings at that time was on the Four Seasons Lanai, and it was just a bridal bouquet. So you couldn't spread it over table centerpieces. So, just by doing a couple already, you knew that you were close to $450. But that's a different clientele. And I think that's part of, in part the difference of doing a destination wedding. They're coming here to Hawaii because they want to be married in Hawaii and they want it really perfect. It's very different when I have to approach it from a local wedding and they're going to take home all the centerpieces for the antiques. And then it has to be affordable and then they need 50 where in this case, pretty much they're going to get their bridal bouquet, they're going to get their the lay for the groom or boutonniere, and they've been waiting for this wedding. So it's not as hard or difficult to say your bouquet is going to be $450 for that look, or I can do it for $300 for this look. So, and, and it's, I guess it's that courageous step, like, you know, <laughs> with them, they have the reality, they have, I mean, they have the great color sense and basically just courage and they just say, my work is worth this much. And that's sometimes hard to develop. Yours is too. She's, doing a, she's doing a fantastic job. Beautiful work. I'm going to take this out there and show it. Is that okay? Yeah. Can I take it out of the vase? Okay. It's going to drip. Excellent. And we're going to go right back to Leah. So, this is a great piece. Actually, this is a good local piece, good for quick destination wedding, somebody that's eloping. So let's talk about this, Leah. Okay, so this one, yeah. a little less flowers, um, but yeah, it's still impactful. We have the large obakis, and then this one Richmond red, I believe that is. And then I just cascaded a little sexy here, a little amaranthus. Um, I have a piece of willow here that already started to grow out the leaves, so that adds a little funness. And then what else do I have? I have a raphis, and it's wrapped with a whale tail. It's such a good, uh, good simple bouquet that mm -hmm. when the bride holds it, she knows, you know where she's at, yeah. right? Which is really great. But it's also a great hospitality bouquet, mm -hmm. right? Simple. For like at the welcoming with the airport with a lay in one of these. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, this yeah. is gorgeous. I love the combination. What What is this particular anterium called? I'm not sure. Just call it <laughs> orange, orange obake. Tessie? <laughs> oh, Tropic Grayson. Sunrise. Can you tell? Oh, yeah. Tropic Sunrise, that's right. Tropic Sunrise is a variety here. It's an obake, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. So obake is a, the, that is Japanese for ghosts, right? Was it hyper, like the whole breeding of that? Is that a Hawaiian thing, obakes? The story is yeah. that. The uh, Japanese uh, backyard hybridizers were trying to uh, achieve a pure red uh, anthurium. Uh -huh. And in their search for the hybridizing, 
whenever it came up, non red or multicolored, they say, oh, Obaki, it's a ghost. It was a mistake. So, again, so they per perpetuated the, the red and thurium as their gold. No, it's, it's beautiful. It's something that I really equate to Hawaii. You see not so much obake types in, from other parts of the world. I think you guys have really, really jazzed it up and made it something really phenomenal. Absolutely gorgeous combination with the hanging heliconia, don't you think? What, what, what's going on with the, with the lay baking? Um, so this is actually a flower crown. Um, so we make both the traditional haku style and then we call this more like, you know, the flower child, flower crown kind of deal. Um, personally, I still like to use the tape and wire. Um, I just don't like waiting for the glue to dry. And then I feel more secure that I know it's taped in here and it's not gonna fall out. Um, so this one, I actually use a thicker gauge wire than usual because I made, um, we're just going with this theme here with the wired roses and uh, I'm gonna attach this on here so uh, with the little Kimmy medallion in the middle. So um, generally I would just, I can make flower crowns just with this bind wire and just do multiple strands and kind of um, bind it together with floral tape. But because this piece is a lot heavier than what I would usually use, I, we went with the thicker gauge wire for the backing. Thank you, Kelsey. Oh, you're welcome. So do you have something for us, Sue? Yeah. So oh, you finished it. I just finished it. Um, basically. Fabulous. And in the back. That's lovely. Can I walk around with it? Sure. Thank yeah. you. Um, the next thing I'm making is a flower girl ring. And so obviously I bought more stuff from Europe. Uh, so but the ring I got from Walmart, you know, they sell it in the three pack. So I got the two different sizes. And so I kind of separated, but I put, um, a stem in between the rings because I wanted it, I wanted to have a space. And then I wired it and then I covered it up with um, yarn because I wanted the flower girl to have something comfort. And so what I did was I just made a grid out of just aluminum wire and I just um, tied it to make it stronger. And then right now I'm gonna leave the back open, but usually I put like a leaf in the back so you don't see the mechanics. Okay, so now we have a mauve and like a raspberry palette. And the temperates are really brought in to the um, chocolate lace and the scabiosas are really brought in to just soften the, it's Brenna Kwan's colors, by the way. We'll call this the Brenna bouquet. And then we have this um, raspberry anthurium, which is, has not been named yet. There, it's going by a number, and I don't quite recall. Tessie? 2555. 2555. So if you were wanting to order this um, raspberry color in Thuria, it's 2055, right? Yes. 2555. Yes. And the beauty of, of these anthuriums that I've picked is they're very, very easy to work with in this shape. It's pretty foolproof, and I'm quite surprised at how a lot of people have some apprehension to working with anthuriums and even local designers. And I think Isn't if you, you order varieties like this, it really makes it a lot easier. And they're more, I call them skyward facing. Um, the technical term is antiochiensi, I believe, and I hope I said that right. You said and it, it, right. it comes from the tulip shape. So you have that skyward facing, so it has that softer line. It's not flat like what, what Tessie would refer to in Eric's dad, is the fly swatter. Because that has a very rigid, stiff look, and I think that sometimes causes people some difficulty. So here's the, you know, we have again the different protea. So this is um, a hybrid. And I've, this is specifically selected because it doesn't have the coloring in the center. So it's not a target. And then we have the um, eczemia. And this is the one I was talking about. You can actually keep it like in a nylon stocking or something so it doesn't blow open on you. And then we have the, uh, some kimi gingers. And 
I, I okay. found this rose, which I thought really tied in the colors together. And a little bit earth tone, because it's a little dirty in the, in the center. Okay, so here's our raspberry and mauve bouquet. This, okay. is, this is a bouquet that is, <laughs> it was started by, when this walked into the room, he walked in with this beautiful armload of these flowers and it was like what I call the oo zone. Okay, so let's face it so that they can see what you're talking about. She's talking about these, the ones that Bruno used as well. And this was David Shigi from the bromeliad, uh, the farm. And it was one of his special spike that he brought to us to use. And he said that it dries beautifully. So that's what she's referring we'll, to right we'll there. We'll find out when I put it in my suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of the weddings that I do, as I said, are uh, destination weddings. Um, they rent these big, beautiful houses. And they all have these cute missionary-style tables that are kind of in the entryway. So a lot of times I get asked to do something at the entrance to the house, um, kind of as a welcoming thing. So the protail is irresistible, but it's nice when you walk into the breezeway of a house to have some fragrance. So tuberose appeared. <laughs> and um, I, I just kept adding textures. I've got some mini torch gingers in there. The amaranth to balance off the tuberose the way it landed. This those, those begonias are stunning. Beautiful begonia. And amazingly, this is like four days cut, so it's not a limper. And notice the beautiful begonia, the color being very much the same. So texture color, uh, contrasts, and similarities. Beautifully done. Silver pink, silver pink, silver pink. Yeah. Excellent. So that's the theory. OK, oh. so I'm going to ask uh, a question that you're going to kind of go, mm, how much is this going to be? Oh, you know, dollar two eighty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would probably be bold and say 250 to $300. Definitely, right? Absolutely, it's stunning, the combinations of beautiful flowers. Um, yeah, it's such a beautiful Hawaiian experience. And with, with the cylinder, I mean, I, I've had customers say, isn't that that stuff that grows on the trees in the south? And I said, Hawaiian version. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, because the stems are clunky, uneven, whatever, a lot of times you'll wrap with tea leaf or wrap with dracaena or something. So would you so, fill that up with water? Yep. Yeah. Because you see how there are some gaps. When you add water to it, somehow it mirrors out and it, you can't see the gaps. <laughs> and also it magnifies it, which is really cool. Yeah. I always love like when you have the water line and then there's a definite magnification below and then the above. I love that contrast. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, Dottie. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so Leah, what do we have? We're just preparing the next step. So Kelsey's making a medallion with, um, I think that's Tomi ginger. Um, Tomi ginger petals, and we're going to add it to our 3D flower here that we made. Usually when we make lays, we just put, it's either um, just solid flowers or we put segments of roses. So something different is we're going to um, attach this to the lay like this, similar to the akulikuli. So it's kind of like sticking out. Cool. So that's so what this we're is out. This is tuberose. Tuberose. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> OK, so your techniques. And uh, you're using lay needle or how you? This is um, a doll needle, actually. A doll needle? Uh -huh. The long doll needles. I prefer this one over the traditional longer lay needles. They're much more sturdy. Mm -hmm. And especially like when we make the akulikuli lay, mm -hmm. we stack multiple, maybe like this much on the needle at one time and then pull it down. Right. So um, it's just it just feels more durable. I would I could see that. And with the roses as well, I will if I use the long traditional lay needle 
my needle would be crooked after one lay. So that's a good tip <laughs> because those are, that looks like a good sturdy yeah. needle that that it's always going to pierce through exactly straight mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Yeah. So good the doll tip. needle you just buy it in any craft store. Wow, that's that's a real good tip. Thank you because it's, somebody asked that question. What is she using? Oh. <laughs> so I'm so glad that we asked. Okay, so any other tips on what you're doing here? This is the beginning of this. Okay. And then we just shape the petals. Okay, excellent. Okay. Okay. All right, so then Sue? So here's the flower girl. Oh my gosh, that's um, beautiful. So it's really, it's, it's really cute. We did it for a photo shoot and I just loved it. But, um, but yeah, it's, I, I left the back open so you can actually see the mechanics of it and just can covered it. it off? Lovely. So cute. And I love this stand. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I went shopping. <laughs> Did you know? I went shopping. So are you kind of like the hack? Like you look at something that's meant for something else and you see a vision of what you can use it for? Yes. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. I, so, I'm like a big IKEA hacker. Yeah. <laughs> like I use a laundry basket for a stand or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. So I actually bought this to do an installation for one of my properties for Christmas. So this one here? For oh, both, both stands. Okay. And so, but I figure I use it here. Oh yeah, it's a great way to display. Yeah. Beautiful. Did you say you glued it? I, I didn't hear. Yeah, I, I glued the flowers on. Yeah. So I made an armature. I, I just made like a backing, a support backing with the wire. And I, I was actually taught by Frank Faisa. You know, you make the wire and you dump on it, and it's flat. It's awesome. Um, and so, and then from there, I just kind of maneuvered and tied it to make it stronger because it's not strong. You know, when you kind of move it, it's aluminum. But when you start attaching it to your sides, it's pretty strong. Yeah. And so the next one I'm doing is a flower girl pomander, and for this one, I actually use a star foam ball, and. Um, Lily grass, because I always love lily grass. Greenpoint actually sells lily grass. I don't know if you know that. Um, and so when I found out about it, I was like, oh, yay, let's use lily grass. So, but this is actually layered upon layers. Um, and then you stick it into your styrofoam. So it, it creates that texture onto the ball. And then from there, you can just pin in whatever flowers you want. Um, but this is basically for an upscale flower girl wedding thing. She's a princess, so I put pearls. And I got, I went to Walmart, because I was desperate, and I got these pearl things. Um, and so uh, we just sewed it up on Suji. It's fishing line, we call it Suji. Um, and then we just made strands and then the handle. But you know how to poke it in and you support it. So it's support. Actually, at the top, the handle is supported from the bottom, and the bottom is supported on the top. So I thread it through, and I did a stick, and I tied it. So that way, it's not just tied on top and the bottom. So I guess the, the gravity of it is if you have something here, and you're going up, it's going to stay up. And you have something down here, and you tie it down, it's going to stay down. So it's not like it will fall apart. Makes sense. So are you finished with that? No, I'm no, still, you're still working, working on it. Yeah. But I'm just looking at those little miniature oh, yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's that's that that's like smaller than designer. It's it's a little mini. Look at this. Aren't they the most precious? I get so perfect for flowers to wear and just small scale wedding work. So amazing. I actually um, did the boutonniere for Max Holloway. His, he, he chose actually the, I made him three and he chose the anthurium to wear. Which grower did you do? Um, Kilauea anthuriums. Okay. So, Lois. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Okay. So this time I'm taking a break from the hand ties because I want to finish with the last one with, as a hand tie. So I'm doing a little different and we're going European following Sue's line and something very delicate. So this is pretty much like a Monique Vandenberg inspired bouquet. And you really want to show the, the, what you're building. So this is just raffia that's wrapped around cardboard, like a cymbidium box. That's probably the right gauge. 
and it has wire with double stick tape so you can actually manipulate it. And very just the wood rose, the mini miniature wood rose vine I thought was perfect because it just kind of helps with the movement and just a couple orchids. I've actually used just pins right now to hold the sexy vine in place while I'm gluing in. So just something very delicate and you know different because I all the rest of my bouquets have been hand ties. So Vanda and Epidendron and Sexy Vine. Yeah. I'm still ac actually gluing in, so yeah. Oh my god. Well my don't ever make this late, but I made it kind of to match my bridal bouquet. Um, cause it's nice to have a little bright color if you were in a white dress or whatever. But I made the mistake of, I mean, I do Vili Vase. So I bought this really pretty silk ribbon and I thought, I'll do that because it'll be real comfortable on the neck. Nightmare. <laughs> it wiggled and wiggled and it was, it, it took me over an hour just to, I did it with braiding and wrapping the stem so that nothing is poking on the inside. So it's it's very comfortable, but you couldn't charge for it. <laughs> it's beautiful. beautiful. I got some mini anthuriums in it too. <laughs> the end, qu Kelsey. Question? Yeah. For those like flowers that you're making out of the rose buds, are you wiring? Like, how are you making that shape? I'm wiring it onto. I'm sewing it onto a 19 with 19 gauge wire and then forming the loops after that. I know you guys are beautiful, but you have a mirror up there, and I've never seen a mirror. How are you using that? Can you share that? Okay, usually we have a big mirror, so we can stand in front of the mirror to do the design, especially with the bridable case. It's super helpful to have a full length mirror. When we're making the bouquets, we're there by ourselves, so I actually have a really tall mirror and I stand in front of it and I, I actually picture it the way that the bride would picture it because you can see things that don't fit, that doesn't match or um, there's not enough depth or anything. So you can actually pull out, pull okay, in, you, you can change the style a little bit, the way that you hold it. So the mirror helps. It's, it's like taking, whenever I do a ceremony, I take a picture of it. I look at it, I scan it, I analyze it. If I don't like anything, I'll move it. Because you can't bring a mirror on ceremony, but it's the same thing when we're doing bouquets. Yeah. Like, if, especially if you want to figure out the front of the bouquet, your best for the camera, then you you know you're spinning it and you know where to pin the the needles. Because a lot of times the photographers will actually look at where you're pinning to have a good idea of what's the front and the back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is too small. Annie, you had a question? I was going to comment that we finish all of our bouquets in the bathroom because it's a mirror. Yes. <laughs> so, like the last little bit, uh, like the parts that are like kind of flying, like the yeah, yeah. You, you might want to go to like Walmart cause, and get one of those standing mirrors. It's not expensive, but if you invest in something, yeah, if you invest in something like that, I mean, you can probably tell that your bouquets are going to look much better when you're presenting it. And especially you would know like which is the front or back. If you're making it all the way around, then you can kind of twirl around with it and make sure that it's right because that is like the image, right, of what they're going to see. So you might want to invest in getting something like at Walmart and just having, I, I have huge mirrors. Like I have three of them and we just. You really like the, um, your flower girl thing as is, you know, with the, the shimmer in the back. And um, I mean, finishing with the leaves is cool too, but we kind of like that. Yeah, you can. I mean, if, if it's decorative, then definitely you can finish it that way. But if you want it to be a one-sided, I usually cut off a leaf, like a tea leaf or something. But definitely if you want it decorative, you can do that. And then you can do some accents in the back too. So it depends on which way she's holding it. It can be a two-sided flower girl ring. So Leah, what are you up to? I'm attaching the um, 3D flower to the lay now. I'm just waiting for that book. Oh, okay. Well, you can do the bouquet. It's okay. fine. 
I don't have to finish it. Okay. No, it looks so, finished. It looks gorgeous already. This is more my style. I like it to be full and round and posy, but adding a little with the scabiosa for a little movement with the greens of the Lisianthus. Um, so lush. I like to do the green palette, and you can change out the color. Any color would match with the green. I have the white owl gardenias that just came back into season, long stemmed. That's something <laughs> that you guys have that we don't have on the mainland. They come on the stem. Yeah. They're beautiful gardenias on the stem. We get it three to a box, and it's $20 for $28 for a box of three. And these are like uh, five stems to a bunch. Mm -hmm. And they're like how much? Uh, what are they, like a dollar fifty maybe? Maybe a dollar fifty a stem. <laughs> <laughs> so the same grower that grows the tuberose and the layhead, she does the long stem gardenias. And she's starting to grow more temperate. And this is her baby tuberose, her mini tuberose stems. So beautiful, right? And uh, you said this is a mink, right? Yeah. It mm -hmm. is a mink, but it's a white owl? Is I think it's called a white owl, yeah. Makai miss or white owl. Okay. Excellent. The texture is absolutely stunning. I'm going to walk it around so you can see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Kelsey? Kelsey. Almost done. Almost done. <laughs> so do you have something going on there, Sue, yeah, that you can talk I about? Yeah, I actually okay. Um, okay. Yeah, made a necklace out of wire yeah, and yeah, yeah. scrunched it all up and um, shaped it. And I add some of that it's pearl pins. Um, I also added ribbons at the end so you can actually wear it later on. And I'm just decorating it. You know, when you make all of your structures, you, later on, it, just embellishing it with flowers, it's just so easy. You know, when you're sitting in front of the TV watching Korean dramas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, and then, yeah, so I'm just going to be embellishing it with flowers. So, uh, Lois, is, you're going to explain what you're up to? So my next one is just a kind of fun piece. Um, and Deb came and I put her to work I, and I asked her, she likes, this is Deb from Honolulu, she likes the zoosicle and she likes to do jewelry. So I asked her to um, make me a dream catcher. Um, so it's a, it's a simple version and it's kind of fun and because you, if you notice my bouquets are usually not all colorful. So we're stepping out a little bit and doing, not really knowing what I was going to do. We went with this yarn from Anthropology, to and was I actually covered that at home, and I just felt that with the this yarn that a fellow designer Tony Alvarez gave me years ago, that I could match any color and it would work. the The seeds in here is Duranta. So it's a shrub that's more like a landscape plant. And these are the Chinaman's hat, which I had in the bouquet earlier. So she, Deb just strung it on the, I believe it's 18 gauge wire. And I asked her, could you just cobweb, uh, make a webbing? So it's just kind of fun. And what I'm gonna be doing while the other girls are doing things too, is I'm just gonna okay. add in, glue in some intergeneric orchids. So I just thought this was kind of like a fun piece, um, maybe for a flower girl to carry. It's kind of fun to be dreamy and just a little bit more whimsical. I always say Deb does, like, does zoosical very well. So I asked her to help me create that. And it's just an embroidery um, hoop that I just took the center out that's at like Walmart used a couple pieces of U-glue to start. And the initial concept was to do um, flexi grass and do something more sculptural. And it just was like the struggle. And I had to just abandon that and go to something more whimsical. So that's, um, I'll be just adding on flowers to finish this off. Sue or yeah. Leah? Well, I just finished, I just did really a simple with the epi orchids, the mini anthuriums, and a little bit of the seed pods from the palm. Um, so that way it, it just makes your necklace more finished. Um, but I'm working on another bouquet. I got um, 
I bought this paper from Europe and uh, I cut it up. And one thing about this, it stretches really nicely. So I, lit, I made like little florets with them. It just stretch and it stretch so much from a little piece. And I just cut it in half, crisscross, and I just wired it to make a flower. Really simple. And there's like tons of this. I did this at home once I got off the plane, did that. And then I saw um, the palm, and I cut it up and I wired it individually. And this is um, siloche. I don't know if you know, but it's, it's a fresh leaf. And when you leave it outside, especially in Hilo, it shrivels. And so we actually use this at symposium. So it's just this whole leaf. It's a big palm leaf, and it dries like this. Not a palm. Or it looks like a palm, like a, like a, yeah, yeah, cecropia. Sorry, not celosia. Cecropia. So it dries like this, and we just cut all the little fingers off and wired it individually. And so I'm going to put it into a bouquet. I, I thought this was so cool that this doesn't, I don't know if people use this, but we use this on our flower wall. It gave a lot of texture, a lot of um, dimension into the wall as well. So we wanted it to dry. And you know, if you were in Vegas, five seconds, it's like, like this. But um, yeah, so I'm just going to attempt to make a bouquet with it. Leah? Not ready yet. So this is the finished piece for the flower crown. We kind of pulled like the Great Gatsby error kind of deal, how they used to just on the side with the feathers or, so personally, Leah likes it on the side and I just <laughs> like it right in the back. So personal preference, um, we kind of made it to, like this could be, you know, the bridal lay and then her matching headpiece to go along with it. Uh, we decided to just do just a greenery base so that it doesn't take away from the focal flower right here. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, and look at this. Can I just show it? Yeah. So this is what she's doing to that piece right there to kind of give it that focal area. That's okay. cool. Oh, it smells so nice every time. Wow. Any other tips on uh, all of this kind of lay work? One thing that I learned about when sewing a lay, a lot of people have problem, a hard time, the hardest part is actually stringing the needle. So I found, I found that, because a lot of people will sit there and try and do this to get the, knee, uh, the string in the needle you could use those threaders that sewers use. But what I do is I just pinch it super tight in between my fingers. And then you just place the needle right on the string. And there's no place else for the string to go other than right in the hole. Oh my gosh. So that will save you like a minute. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. A minute times however, however, however many, many, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We like time-saving ideas, yeah. for sure. That's a great, great tip. Yeah. Uh, now, it's going to take us a few times to do that. It's not going to be that easy for us on the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. And what, you, what are you up to now, Sue? Oh, I, I mean, yeah. I, no, 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 I'm just asking. Oh, I'm just making a hand type, OK. OK. And the ingredients are? The um, cecropia, the palms, gumfrina, paper, uh, roses, I'm not sure if I'm going to use these tiny little white gingers. Oh, those are beautiful. And um, some anthuriums. OK, so, so I think this is Midori. Yeah. I think so. For some people who don't know a sacropia, can you pass that, that big leaf over yeah. there? Mm -hmm. Locals know it. Locals probably know it as garbage. <laughs> the mainlander go, ooh, what is that? And how do we get it, right? Because I was driving along the road, and I'm like, I've been looking for Cecropia, and I saw it on the ground, and I'm like, you guys have it right here. And then I look up, and there's like lots. So that's what it is. They're usually shipped just fresh and flat, because this obviously doesn't ship well, because it can crumble if it's not packed well. But that's the whole idea. Ship it flat, fresh, and then you dry it. 
And you can kind of control the drawing to get different shapes that you want. So like if you lay it flat on top of each other, they'll wrinkle less. Like you can do things to get some specific shapes out of it, but just they naturally curl and they're really stunning. It's really the color, isn't it? We love the gray and then, you know, that's sort of the two-tone kind of feel to it. So, so you're just taking it apart and using it as elements just wired. Just wired, okay. Yeah. Just to give texture into the bouquet. Lois, what are you doing? So I've just finished up my little dream catcher and taking just taking the same elements that were strung on the wire. So this is the Chinaman's hat. Here's our intergeneric orchid. And this is what the Duranta looks like. So those are all the elements just strung on. And I really try to keep my work simple and just show off the few elements that are there. Could be used where the girl walks this down the aisle, a uh, yeah. junior bridesmaid or yeah, something. Yeah, that could be really yeah. nice. So that's the finish yeah, of the... Definitely. So I'm just wondering if each one of you can give a little bit of a, um, your thoughts on weddings, uh, what you, you see down the pipe, like what your, what your wor uh, weddings are looking like coming up in 2023. Just a little short something, what, what, what you're thinking of doing next year? Probably the coordinators that I work with have gained a little bit more trust in me, so they don't send me 25 Pinterest pictures and say, this is what the bride wants. I tell them, give me a color, you know. So I've been able to stretch a little bit further that way as far as doing things I like to do artistically. But the weddings, now that the wedding season has opened up again, they're going from 25 to 40 people is big after COVID. But I've been getting orders for 250 people, so lots more centerpieces and bigger and... It is definitely opening up, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, it, it's so a lot more work. <laughs> yeah. Wish I was younger. <laughs> but lots of great ideas that you can incorporate now, having seen all what, what all of these girls are doing. It's, it's fantastic. So Lois, what do you see down the pipe? Well, I find it very difficult right now with the pandemic and the shortage of flowers. That's the honest truth. The cost of flowers, getting it on time has been a real challenge. Everything's pretty much shipped in, even if we're getting, doing local. And that has been the challenge where that's why I'm trying to source so much on island to get a wedding done. Um, it's just been frustrating and you can really lose it, you know, where you have to. We had a couple instances where the flowers just didn't, they made it the day of the wedding. So basically you are repurchasing the flowers out of all of your profit to satisfy the bride and the coordinator so that you just can appear there with a smile like nothing happened. And you, you just have to eat it and do it. And, and so I'm at a point, you know, that I'm, try, I'm actually trying to take a break. Um, I think it's just really difficult right now well, to get product. We don't want her to take a break from teaching and showing us all her <laughs> great stuff, right? She could have a break from her weddings. Not, not book so many, but uh, continue to teach because she has so much to teach. And look at this bouquet. Okay, so Sue, what are you saying? Uh, kind of the, um, end of year, well, still, I know you're still busy with weddings, but for 2023, um, how's it looking? And what are you thinking of doing? Some of the, the, the weddings that you like to sell, what you, what, what you would love to see. So I had this problem that after we did some weddings, my brides literally changed it to green and white. And it was two months straight, and I swear to God, I have to give credit to that guy there, Grayson. He saved my ass because he, it was all white anthuriums, white dendrobiums. I mean, I was like, please help. And I, I just hope that brides realize that there's more than just green and white weddings. Like, there's color. I mean, there's, there's color. There's, there's <laughs> color. You know, because there's only so much I can do. I mean, I swear to God, I'm so stressed out. Yeah, I get kind of I, I'm so it. stressed out. But, you know, the, the wedding's next, it's still going to happen. We're in Hawaii. It happens 365 days out of the year. And we're getting so many requests, it's hard to keep track. But 
I, you know, I want to do this. I want to teach and I want people to learn, but I still have to make a living. I still have to do the weddings. It, it's going to be there, but. But I feel it's, like with a program like this and some of the photos that are being taken and the filming that's being done, people can see how much beauty there are in the colors. I think it's yeah. really, they need to see a perfect example of things that they can't resist. And I think we're seeing that here today. Uh, some beautiful bouquets, like. But you know what though? Yeah. So just as I'm talking about the green and white weddings and stuff like that, I have a a bride that I'm literally trying to work on and it's the color, it's about, like I email them and say, tropicals are not available in December. <laughs> she wants like the honeycombs and all the color stuff. She doesn't want the green and white. She wants <laughs> all the color stuff. So I'm like, oh my God. just when I just try to talk her out of the green and white, she'd go to color, now it's like, I can't, I, I can't win. Well, you know what? I think that's one of the things that we have to remember that there's seasonality in tropicals as well. And right. I think they think that it, everything perpetuates through the year. So all this education that we have sort of put together here will help you sell properly and educate them so that they know better what to ask for when. I mean, it's obvious that this information is really needed. We are working on a new Neotropica guide that's going to come out next year that's going to actually deal a lot more with these issues like, um, you know, it has like the size guides, but we're gonna make a much more definitive size guide because I think a lot of mainlander when they order medium, they think, they think small is this and medium is this. It might be in their world of flowers, but not in the tropical world. Like if you order medium, like one of my friends that ordered medium for filming said, oh my God, that's so big. Well, then you needed to order small, but they need to know that, right? So uh, I think that the new guide would address that. Also seasonality, so that the bride won't be, and then you can sort of use it as a proof. Th this is what's available right here. So I think that's going to help, right? Don't yeah. you think? Yes. Yeah. And of course, these people are out there and, and showing and talking about it, so that makes a huge difference as well. OK, so wrap up for you guys. What, what are you guys selling for 2023 that you're excited about? Uh, I like to sell the, I don't know what you call it, ground arch, not an actual structure. Ah, I just the arrangement, it's like a half moon. It's easier for setup, easier for takeaway, and they can repurpose the items in different sections. Like we suggest to put it on the dance floor or on the bar. That's a great idea, yeah. So what is it called? What do we call? What, what, what do we you call it a ground arch or What do you call it? Like the uh, lowest, like that arch on the ground. What do you call or that? the flowers on the ground. I call it open circle. Open circle. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll call it that. So it has an opening, kind of horseshoe, yeah. sort of, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, that installation, like maybe we're tired of going up and down the yes. ladder. <laughs> That's a great idea. Okay, so uh, maybe then you can talk about your, your bouquet. Both of you. Okay, since Sue is going on to green, and I don't want to... There's a, the whole, that other whole palette of white and green. Before I finish with my finale piece, I just want to show you the variety of flowers because we didn't get to finish. We both had one more piece each to do. But the variety of flowers that you can find in a white and green palette, it's, it's a shame to not have been able to show you one more color palette. But we do have the the white gingers, which, you know, there's not a whole lot, but there is white ginger on the island. And then there's the white torch gingers. And then, of course, the Hawaiian dendrobians, which are so beautiful because they bloom out to the, to the tip and you're not getting one third bloom and buds when you're buying, importing a Thai or Singapore dendrobian. Um, and we have like the bride, queen, um, Blushing Seria, bride. yeah, blushing bride, and monstera leaves, mm -hmm. and protea, and mm -hmm. hokuloa anthuriums, gorgeous. This is a favorite um, from Greenpoint. Can you tell us the name? Because you're calling it a fluffy fern. Fluffy fern. She wants it all named after her. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I mean, look at these leaves where you have the Clarinervium and the Amazonica, the Alocasia. And in the Protea family, if you're going greens, you can go with Banksias and green owls along with 
Not very often you're going to find a white mink here, but this was a white mink grown on island. And the curly lawai, great foliage as well. Um, as you can see, this color palette, I've pulled more of the green yellow tone foliages. So well, I believe that's the palette that Sue was looking for. <laughs> right? Green and white. Yeah. Hard to find. Okay, so yeah. we, we have to kind of wrap it up. So, Sue? I was going to do one more bouquet, where, but I don't have time. But it was actually white, and I was going to embellish it with lays. Um, so I had plumeria lays, tuberose lays, crown lays. Um, I had more stuff, like, I don't know what this is, but stuff, fun stuff that I was going to put it in it with Philanopsis and orchids and white anthuriums. I'd like to thank this panel. Is it, was it not the most spectacular bridal bouquet show? Good job. Excellent, excellent. Good job. And I just want to say uh, thank you again, but I just want to say, did you know that Lois Hironaga is going to be one of the judge at the Rose Bowl Tournament of Roses Parade. Yeah, isn't that cool? What? Yeah, sure, yeah. Talking about the football game. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Green and white. It's the football game. I'm going to be watching the parade. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you, all of you. All of you, Leah, Kelsey, Sue. Lois and Dottie. And Kathleen, my assistant, she did a phenomenal job. Helped me wire everything. Yeah. Wow, you ladies did a fantastic job. <clears throat> Wonderful, so it, creative. It was, it was truly amazing. I mean, it really takes, really, I know that sometimes we say four island girls as we, you know, that we don't always identify the names, but you can just see how much they know about the product from the islands. I mean, they're so experienced in everything to do with bouquet making, doing weddings, it's so refreshing to hear from you guys to share with us all the great ideas, mechanics, techniques, and all. So thank you so, so much. We have a question and answer section. Um, yes, there's a question exactly. that we received from the chat. <clears throat> and it says, what is the size category of the obake in Leah's contemporary bouquet? Yes, I believe it's extra large. I, I really am thankful for all that information. I mean, I think that's why there's not necessarily a lot of questions because they answered everything. They gave us everything they've got and all that sharing is so valuable. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, all of you, each one of you, Lois, Sue, Dottie, Leah, for representing your island so well and representing all the products that's from each of the islands. So thank you so much.